Pantheon Rise of the Fallen is often referred to as a group-oriented game. Wait, I, I feel like I'm having deja vu, like I've started a video like this before. Pantheon Rise of the Fallen is often described as a group-oriented game. Oh yeah, that's the video where I explained how you can still solo in Pantheon even though it's mostly designed for grouping. But there's another side of the equation, because if the baseline is a group of six, but you can sometimes go less with that, it begs the question, what about more than six? What about raiding? This is Buzz Grimm TV. Learn, laugh, level up. Raiding is a big deal to a lot of people, and that's probably partly because most MMOs on the market these days essentially revolve around raiding. In fact, you've probably played an MMO where you felt obligated to rush through the leveling process just so that you can jump into the raids because that's where you're told the quote-unquote real fun is. But that can get monotonous after a while. So the developers of Pantheon have explicitly stated that they're trying to kind of flip that formula on its head by putting the emphasis on exploring and leveling up in the context of small groups and making that actually meaningful. But in the same breath, they've also said that you'll definitely be able to raid, it just won't be the main attraction of the game. Because they want the fun to be more about the journey rather than the destination, so to speak. But we all still want to know what raiding will be like, right? Well, after many, many questions from the community, the devs have finally spilled enough beans to get an idea of what we can expect. Most recently, creative director Chris Joppa Perkins reappeared on the Pantheon Developer Roundtable. And this was actually part two of a roundtable that they had started at the end of last year. And now after the holiday break, he's returned to finish answering the questions. And a huge percentage of the new information that we got out of this is related to rating, which is of course very exciting and I can hardly wait to break it down for you here today, like I always do. So if you want more Pantheon coverage like this, hit the subscribe button now. But let's start out by trying to get an idea of how much rating content there will be. Like, if most of the content is designed for a group of roughly four to six people, how much is not? How big of a part will rating play in the overall Pantheon experience? Well, to answer that, we actually have to go back to August 2018 to the MMORPG.com GameSpace Game Show, where Joppa explained how Raiding in Pantheon isn't just an afterthought, and they are already working to make sure that there is enough raid content at launch. For me personally, I was a, uh, an MMO gamer before I was a developer, right. Right? and I was an MMO gamer for a really long time, and so I've experienced firsthand that sense of launching with a game, diving in, you know, leveling at a competitive pace, and then getting to end game and, and realizing there's just absolutely nothing to do. Mm -hmm. or. If there is something to do, it's usually tacked on and hanging by a thread, and you break it, you know, every time you touch it, and uh, <laughs> it just seems really, you know, kind of second thought or whatever. And um, we have already, uh, with that in mind, we we started our whole world building process with um, the commitment to have three raid zones um, d defined and conceptualized and planned and gone through pre-production and all those things from from the beginning. And, and that's a raid zone, not just an encounter, but, but zones, full zones that are devoted to raid content with, you know, of course, several points of that kind of apex raid encounter within right. them. And, um, and that's something that we're committed to. And it's, it's something that when Pantheon launches there, I could list the names if I wanted to, but um, there's already three raid zones uh, planned, conceptualized, and um, going to be ready for, uh, for players to tackle. And then staying on top of that is going to be really important as well. And I want to point out real quick that one part of making the game more about the journey than the destination could include having some more mid-level raids, like as their FAQ suggests, around level 20 or 30. Now that's of course not explicit confirmation, we don't know what the levels of the raid zones will be at launch, or what will be added after, but I just want to put it out there that it's a possibility they're considering to make it feel less like you have to just rush through the leveling process. 
But regardless, let's say you decide you want to try out one of these raid zones. How many people should you bring with you? Well, this is one of the key questions that Joppa answered in the most recent developer roundtable. Raid content is being developed with uh, 12, 24, and 40 person caps in mind. I actually tend to think of it more as in 12, 24, and 36, but I like 40 because it just gives a little bit of extra breathing room. And remember, there aren't any raid finder systems. Or in other words, it's not going to be like some games where each raid has a specific composition of a certain amount of each class role that it needs, and then the game just automatically places you with random people. That would be antithetical to Pantheon's principles of more organic socialization. Now, I should mention that there will be some tools to kind of facilitate and expedite more organic relationships so you don't just waste your time trying to find people to play with, but that's a big topic for another day. So let's say you got your raid force together. You travel to the location where you've heard this boss has a tendency to spawn, and then you remember, of course, this is an open world game. There's no instances that guarantee that you'll have that whole boss to yourself, so maybe there's already another raid force waiting there. The question is then, who gets the boss? In most open world MMOs, there's usually two ways of going about this. First to engage, or FTE, means that the first raid force that deals damage to the target gets to loot it if they kill it. Alternatively, there's most damage done, or MDD, meaning whichever raid force deals at least 51% of the damage gets to loot it when they kill it. So it's essentially a race. And there are pros and cons to each, which have been heavily debated in the Pantheon community for a long time. And Joppa has finally put those to rest with a solid answer on how it will be handled. The plan right now for raids is that raid targets will be first to encounter. Um, credit will apply to the entirety of the raid force um, that the first to encounter player is within. And so once a raid target is tagged, only the members of the tagging raid force are going to be able to inflict damage on the raid target. It will be, it will be locked to the raid force that is uh, first to encounter. And like we talked about earlier, a raid force is going to consist of up to 40 players. Um, each raid target is, is going to be tuned for a raid force of either 12, 24, or 40 players. And um, where we would kind of go from there is to say, uh, if if a 40 person raid force tags a raid target that is intended for a 24 person raid, then that target is going to scale in difficulty in proportion to the number of raid force members that exceeds its intended size. So when we say we're designing these raids for, you know, 12 or 24 or 40 person raids, um, we're doing first to encounter for raid targets. And if you get, you know, 40 people, a 40 person raid target showing, or raid force showing up to a, uh, you know, a uh, 12, you know, uh, 12 size, a 12 person raid force or 24 person raid force target, then you're going to see that target scale dramatically based on the number of, of um, additional uh, people in that raid force that show up. The first to encounter, um, I, I think, first to encounter solves a lot of things but not if you're able to tag with a single person um i think there's something to be said about guilds you know being in a certain place you know it's not there's going to be at probably a predetermined area around a raid target where a a first to encounter attempt can begin setting up um and then whether it's in the form of a race or uh, whatever it ends up being and, you know, guilds, we, whether we consider something like a lockout where, you know, if, if you are the one, the guild to tag that target, then, you know, maybe, maybe you have to sit out, you know, the next spawn and then it kind of resets the spawn after that. Maybe not. Um, but you know, what I'm hoping to see is that guilds will, you know, work out some kind of a, an agreement, um, to a degree with, you know, who's going to tag when and, um, that will be dependent, though, on respawn time. So if it's if it's crazy long respawn time, then I don't think guilds will feel a whole lot of impetus trying to strike an, an agreement um, because of how long they have to wait. So, but the key is 
first to encounter is going to it's going to solve a lot of things for us and for you guys in a lot of ways but it, it can't just be like you know I've got my rogue camped here or I've got my ranger camped here and you know as soon as the, as the thing spawns I'm spamming hotkeys there really needs to be more of a, a raid force that's accumulated and that first to encounter will most likely be only be registered if there's enough of that particular raid force there and present um, so you know, I, I just don't want to see, uh, you know, a, a single character tagging the the boss and then kiting it around while, you know, the guild musters and gets there. You need to be there. You need to be generally set up, prepared, ready to go. And then, you know, when you've got enough people there to tag, then you tag and you, you're on your way. Now, that inevitably brings up the critical discussion about how to manage the level of competition over particular raid targets so that guilds aren't constantly bickering over who should get to fight the boss next. Now, to some degree, part of being in a community is having to figure out how to work together with other people, so in this case, you could try setting up a waiting list or something like that, but beyond that, the devs have mentioned that they are keenly aware of this issue as MMO gamers themselves and are coming up with some creative ways to deal with it. Like, for example, one thing they're doing is spreading desirable items throughout the world to reduce bottlenecks or even adding in some soft locking mechanisms like this door that closes to prevent anyone else from entering while your group is fighting Nishura. But that's, again, an even bigger debate that's probably better suited for a time like Alpha when there are a lot more people in-game testing things out. So I'll definitely be expanding on those aspects of raiding as more information becomes available to us. This video just serves as a sort of introduction to raiding. Because by now, we have a good idea of how many raids there are, how many people we should bring, how we claim the targets, etc. But how do we actually fight them? And what sort of mechanics can we expect to see in raids without completely spoiling them, of course? Well, the first thing you should know about is called manifestations. If you've heard of the disposition system before in Pantheon, this is basically the same idea applied to major bosses. So that means that whenever a boss spawns, it has a chance of spawning with a manifestation. And if it does, a manifestation is chosen at random from a list of possibilities, which is tailored to that specific boss. And depending on which one it spawns with, it can affect the boss's behavior and abilities in various ways. One of the primary reasons for this is that it makes it so that the boss fights don't get so predictable, or else the game will just get less exciting less challenging, and overall less interesting over time as you repeat the content. But what's interesting about this is it also changes the boss's loot table. Because one of the fundamental design philosophies of Pantheon is that risk should be rewarded, as well as loot just making sense for the mob that drops it. And if you want to learn more about item design in Pantheon, I'll provide a link to a playlist that expands on it more. But for now, let's move into the danger zone the actual abilities that raid bosses might have in their arsenal. While we'll mostly have to discover this for ourselves in-game, Visionary Realms senior programmer Jason Wyman spoke in a different developer roundtable and was kind enough to give just a little taste of the sorts of things he's worked on. So I'm a huge fan of getting in all of those mechanics to do all kinds of crazy stuff and build out giant, complex, fun raid zones that, you know, in my opinion, should go on forever, but I know some people like to go to sleep. Um, now, things like damage reflect, healing, um, some of that, a lot of that stuff, there's already functionality in there. We've got things like counterspelling, reflecting, copying spells, changing targets. Now, how designers decide to use those, and like, you know, what what's an NPC ability versus what players can do, and how those are all hooked up, like really up to the design team, but we're making sure to be able to support all kinds of crazy stuff. Basically, I would, one of the things I'd like to do is be able to support just about anything that you could do in like a D&D &D style game or um, some of the stuff you could do in like a Magic the Gathering game, like all kinds of cool things like stripping spells, grouping up to counter spells so that multiple people have to counter it. Um, all that kind of stuff is already kind of 
available and just kind of influx on what what we're going to do with them and and how those things will or will not work um and what things will do them but we're just trying to make it as flexible as possible so they can do all kinds of fun cool stuff and ideally show off some new things that we don't see in a lot of other games or that you know are only in certain other games so with one of the new fights there's the raid boss and he throws his weapons so he takes his weapons throws them out and then they fly back and they do damage or whatever they want to the the anybody that gets hit basically along the way so it's like throwing them out and they fly back kind of like a boomerang um and setting up that system and building it out so that it worked for that guy but also so that we could theoretically reuse it wherever we want like i run around and just screw around throwing it on my own character now i make my own guy just throw his weapons out with my little test ability that does the same thing and making it so that it's kind of a an option at least to be a universal spread out thing um so that, that was kind of one of the cool ones I, I had a lot of fun with so hopefully you now have a better idea of what to expect when it comes to raiding in pantheon and before too long we should actually be able to see a lot of this in action for the first time with the reveal of project fairthale because as Jason was alluding to in that last clip, the update will include a fully functioning raid, as was previewed here. So we're definitely looking forward to that. But until then, my name is Basgram, and I'll see you in the next video.